In 1948, Paul and Alma Schwann bought out a partner and opened Schwann's Dairy in Marshall, Minnesota. The dairy bottling plant was profitable and it led to a small dairy store, a restaurant, and eventually the production of perfected ice cream recipes. In 1950, their oldest son Marvin returned from college and began taking a bigger role in the business. Over the course of the next couple years, Marvin began to notice the high ice cream prices of neighboring towns and the trend of people buying their own freezers. He decided that home delivery would be beneficial to these rural families. So Marvin loaded up his 1946 Dodge panel van with dry ice and 14 gallons of ice cream and headed north out of Marshall, Minnesota to sell his family's premium ice cream to the neighboring communities. By the end of his first route, Marvin had sold out of his ice cream and realized that he was onto something. Within a year, he had bought his first freezer truck and added it to his delivery operation. Quickly, the Schwann's name became synonymous with the best ice cream in southern Minnesota. He also hired an artist friend to paint the trucks a creamy yellow, with a distinctive cursive logo along the side. The trucks were now selling 120 gallons of ice cream per day in round, returnable ice cream containers, and the courteous assistance of the drivers helped to attract a very loyal customer base. In 1956, Schwann's expanded with a new distribution depot in the southeast portion of Minnesota and a freezer warehouse located in the central region. The very next year, the Redwood River, which ran through Marshall, began to flood due to melting snow and spring rains. The flood severely damaged equipment and halted operations for four days at Schwann's Dairy. A federal disaster loan allowed the business to recover, which it did rapidly under Marvin's leadership who was now the company's general manager. In 1957, Schwann's trucks began to carry products that were not made of dairy. A juice concentrate named Vitasun was the first drink that was carried, but it wouldn't be the last. Throughout the 1960s, Schwann's began to acquire other food products to sell. By the time that sandwiches, fish, and frozen pizza were added, the yellow trucks could be found in eight states, with revenues topping $5 million. With the rising popularity of frozen pizza, sales of pizza were fast approaching those of ice cream, so Schwann's needed a company that could handle their production. They found their company by running an ad in the Wall Street Journal with a simple headline, Wanted, Frozen Pizza Manufacturer. The ad led to the purchase of Tony's Pizza, which had a large plant in Salina, Kansas. The pizza acquisition proved a resounding success and fueled much of the company's growth during the 1970s, despite heavy competition. On February 23, 1974, tragedy struck when their dairy plant in Marshall was destroyed by a fire. After considering a move to South Dakota, Schwann's decided to reinvest in the city of Marshall, which employed 25% of the town. During the rebuild, the company also addressed the high cost of gas during the mid-1970s by converting all of their vehicles over to propane fuel. During the 1970s, Schwann's became more than just a frozen food delivery company. With a food service division, they began supplying products to schools and other venues. In 1976, they also introduced a new pizza, Red Baron. The quality of Red Baron pizzas made it popular with consumers, and it grew to become the company's best-selling pizza brand. In an effort to market Red Baron pizzas, a squadron of World War II-era biplanes served as ambassadors for the brand. The planes would end up flying for 28 years, becoming the longest-serving civilian aerobatic team in the United States. 
The 1980s saw continued development and acquisitions of new food products. Asian foods were the next to be offered, along with new variations of pizzas, including single-serve deep-dish pizzas called Little Charlie's. In 1984, Schwann's became innovators, not just by being the first to deliver food to your door, but with the use of technology too. Schwann's home delivery drivers were the first to carry handheld computers, which were used to place customer orders. A toll-free number was also established, along with mobile credit card ordering to make it easier for customers. On May 9, 1993, Marvin Schwann, the company's founder, died from a heart attack at the age of 64. Schwann's employees were stunned at the news. Newspapers throughout the country carried Marvin's obituary. Some newspapers even labeled him the emperor of ice cream. His brother Alfred took over as the company president. Marvin Schwann built his company into a multi-billion dollar success story. Not only was Schwann's one of the first food delivery companies, but their products are also scattered all throughout our grocery stores. Red Baron, Freshetta, Tony's, Mrs. Smith's, and Pagoda are just a few of the many brands we may not have known were from Schwann's. The global company that remained rooted in small town culture remained a family run business up until 2019. Following the death of Alfred Schwann in 2011, the company continued to grow globally and would eventually be sold to a South Korean company called CJ Foods. In an effort to keep a portion of the company in the family, the home delivery division was spun off as an independent company of which the Schwann family still owns 100%. Maybe you are sitting at home right now, waiting for a visit from the Schwann's truck. While you wait, let me know in the comments your memories of the food company that started the home delivery craze. As always, thank you so much for watching.